What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Queer Collective Podcast. I'm your host, Carbon. And I'm Emily. And welcome to the show. Today, we're talking about one of my favorite topics. What's your favorite topic? Gay marriage. Ooh, what do a couple of queers know about some gay marriage, huh? I know a bit. <laughs> and I like to talk about it. <laughs> well, to be fair, frank, and honest, mm -hmm. I don't know very much at all. I want to today be playing the role of the student, and I want you to take me to school. I just put my professor glasses on. Thank you very much. So first thing <laughs> first, the reason that I honestly wanted to do this topic today is because we're now at that age, and I know that a lot of our listeners are also at this age where a lot of our friends and colleagues are all getting married oh so. yeah okay yeah right so There's that's so many people getting married like everybody everyone 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 think of somebody yep they're getting married they're getting married oh. i was at the hairdresser she had like eight friends getting married oh my god it's i was started shamelessly repeating dresses i don't care yeah <laughs> so that's kind of why it's been at the top of our mind and then we started mulling over because some people have asked us as well would we ever want to get married? Mm -hmm. Difficult question. Difficult question. And it feels like a very loaded question to me because I know that marriage is definitely rooted in misogyny. Mm -hmm. And the history of gay marriage is also very interesting. And that's been a huge part of my decision and my sort of mulling it over. So I thought I would like to talk to you guys about it. Yeah, that's OK. Do I have absolutely. your consent? You have. Well, you have my <laughs> consent, certainly. But before we hop into gay marriage in particular, mm -hmm. you mentioned that traditional marriage is rooted in misogyny. So can you first mm -hmm. talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Well, there's so many pieces to a wedding that are rooted in misogyny mm -hmm. like a lot of the traditions yeah. basically like walking your daughter down the aisle to give her away to another man who is going like she's now going to take his last name mm -hmm. you know that's pretty gross that's like it's ownership is it what is. it is so then like then the dad essentially mm -hmm. owns the daughter up until he gives her away mm -hmm. to the next man that is going to be her male savior yeah. and provide for her and own her and, mm -hmm. you know, call the shots and do all those things traditionally. And this idea that you have to ask the father for permission to right. ask for someone's hand in marriage. It's all about these permission things. And yeah. I don't like that. And that gives like the notion that a woman doesn't have autonomy over herself. Her life, her body. And she can't make her own decisions. Mm -hmm. More so too in like modern time marriages. I just don't like how binary everything is. Yeah. Like. I feel that. A bachelorette party. A bachelor you know party. I mean? A gender reveal party. Pink or blue. What is it? You know. I just don't like any of it truth be told so if we were to ever have a marriage it would be very much not traditional yeah <laughs> in all senses it you would be already know <laughs> whatever my idea of a wedding is our idea yes, thank you very sorry. much you and that is only just like a small piece of it there's so many other little details of weddings that are rooted in misogyny as well which you can look up um i'm not going to go through everything because this is not a sociology class this is my podcast <laughs> <laughs> but that just gives you like a small idea of kind of like where i'm coming from mm -hmm. the lens i'm looking at marriage from so then in regards to gay marriage what's the difference there and yeah. what's the history behind it this is where it gets really interesting and this is where mm. i enjoy telling the story okay. so initially queer people actually didn't want anything to do with marriage because that signifies the whole institution that they're basically rebelling against by yeah. loving each other the idea of marriage is so tied to this idea of the nuclear family and also it does also tie into like both men and women but i would say specifically women mm. and their how do you say the virtue perhaps mm. where it's like women it a clean virgin exactly and women traditionally are like i'm saving myself for marriage mm -hmm. and then they never experience anything or anybody and then they get into a marriage and then they're like hmm should i have done that and Maybe. it's like whoopsie doopsie oh. now you're in this legal binding thing that you oh, may what? not have actually thought through or even wanted oh geez rick so moving from that like that was kind of the lens no one was actually very much interested in fighting for marriage equality Mm -hmm. at that point but 
fast forwarding into the AIDS crisis, which actually had a really huge impact on the queer community and queer history in general. So I would honestly love to do a whole episode just on the AIDS epidemic. I just need to figure out which lens I would want to take it at because it is. It has had an impact on so many different elements of queer life. Yeah. Uh, Also, let us know in the comments if you are even interested in Mm -hmm. learning about the history of the AIDS crisis within the queer community. Yeah, because it is truly so sad. We've lost so many people who would have been queer elders, queer knowledge keepers because of the AIDS epidemic so like it it gives me like chills thinking about it like Mm. it is like such a huge piece of our history so in terms of marriage during the AIDS epidemic which honestly hit the the gay community the hardest initially AIDS was actually dubbed GRID which is gay related immune deficiency that's wow yeah that's it's like only gays can have it Exactly. So that actually like increased homophobia. Everyone was scared of gay people, scared to be associated with you. Yeah. You know what I recently saw? It was a poster from like way back in the AIDS Mm -hmm. epidemic where a typical white uh, nuclear family Mm -hmm. would wear masks because like just like the masks that we wear today, they would wear masks because they thought that you could get AIDS if you were too close to a gay person. Yeah. (laughs) But in general, though, like the medical community just had no idea about anything related to AIDS. They really yeah, didn't. They that's just, true. They just recognized that a lot of gay men were getting AIDS. That's a common thing among queer topics, huh? It's just that there's never any research Not behind enough it. Information. Never enough information behind any of anything. Yeah. So just to be clear, uh, AIDS cannot be transmissible through air, spit or through air spit. or anything. So like yeah. wearing a mask doesn't make any sense. I don't want to like add to the... To the um, flame. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, <laughs> you can't get AIDS just by being near a gay person or touching someone or yeah. touching someone. Or, yeah. yeah. Even if they do have AIDS. Yeah. So. That ain't it. <laughs> <laughs> so, and not only gay people can get AIDS. Thanks for coming to my masterclass. <laughs> <laughs> so, this was happening, and a lot of people who had been exiled from their family basically, they came out as gay to their family and they didn't accept them. So, They hadn't spoken for years Mm -hmm. and they had been living with their partner once they had gotten so sick with AIDS that they were hospitalized and eventually died. The people who were allowed in the hospital room were only blood relatives because you'll know with marriage, your spouse is allowed to make legal decisions for you, allowed to be in the hospital room. But when there's no legal piece to that, you lose all of your your rights to that. That's absolutely ridiculous. And mm-hmm. and here's why it's really, really ridiculous to me is that to like, OK, so law in general mm-hmm. is a construct. It's made by us. Yeah. Like we made it a thing like humans and mm-hmm. we believe it. Therefore, it's real. Yeah. Right. But it was made up. It was Mm -hmm. made up that only blood relatives can see you at a hospital and not anyone else that you might consider more of a family than a blood relative. So to even have this in place in the first place is just so ridiculous to me. Like it it takes completely takes away the notion, any notion of community Mm -hmm. and chosen family and just meaningful relationships outside of blood relatives well it's just so sad to like it's so sad if i can just paint a picture for you imagine you've been living with your partner for 10 years like they are yeah. your spouse yeah and suddenly they fall extremely sick and you're not allowed in the hospital room you're not allowed to go see them and then they die and the life that you've built together all of the wealth that they've accumulated all goes to their family who they are estranged from, the family who hasn't accepted you as a couple. So that's where things started to feel really, really horrible. They weren't allowed to make any funeral arrangements. They yeah. were sometimes that's not so allowed sad. at the funeral because of the family. So I like the extreme trauma and grief that is caused there is like unimaginable. That for makes me, me angry. Mm, that makes shouldn't me so angry. like that should be rewritten Mm. like that that kind of those kind of laws should be rewritten like especially now 
when we know that it's more than just blood relatives and a yeah. lot of people don't consider their lo- lo- blood relatives their actual family like it's just like a, a very flawed and mm. terrible law that was put in place to begin with and the fact that it affected so many human beings first and foremost that just happened to be gay in such terrible sad ways is it, it's quite honestly infuriating yeah so that is actually what sparked the desire to fight for mm-hmm. gay marriage yeah gay marriage rights that makes sense so the ways that the gay community and the lesbian community went about it is actually mm, a little bit problematic Ooh. Uh, i'm problematic he's a problem Really? Yeah. Tell me more. more yeah, it. of course. Yeah, it was pretty like trans exclusionary. So, oh, is yeah. this now relating back to our previous podcast episode called "The Dark mm. History of Feminism"? Mm-hmm. Does that relate? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Mm, okay. So Say more right now. <laughs> it was basically the whole campaign to legalize gay marriage was around no- like normalizing the queer, queer okay. the norm. Mm -hmm. the whole like saying so they would create all of these kind of like propaganda images of like nuclear seeming families oh that had same-sex couples so it would be like a lesbian couple where both of them fit like typical female gender norms and they're like with their kid and they're both white you know Ah. what i mean and it just looks very like wholesome and it's like two white gay men and they have their child you know and it's like this is good and it feels comfortable for you i'm cringing yep yeah so that's how they fought for that. And of course, that created a lot of division in the queer community. And it no also created this kind of like hierarchy and an unequal. Yes, absolutely. Unequal that, rights. Especially like uh, you could say straight passing mm-hmm. white, either gay or lesbian couple yeah. like that you know and, and it still stands today like there's privilege there there's privilege mm-hmm. there's ex- more acceptance when it's yeah. like that and there is still i would say um not as prominent but a little bit hierarchy mm-hmm. there as well absolutely absolutely and that's why it's so important that we do not stop our activism within the queer community until everyone has like affords the same rights that even you and i do because Mm -hmm. we are a very straight passing like femme couple yeah when i don't want to wear a backwards head yeah or a button up yeah but yeah yeah i get what you're saying Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah so it's important to fight for everyone in the community because we're what a community and we're what queer (laughs) so that's basically my whole spiel on gay marriage that's all the tea that I presently know. I would love mm-hmm. to hear anyone in the comments who has more information. Also, like if you're also like a queer history buff, I would love to be your friend. I've been looking for other um, people who are passionate about like queer theory. Yeah. I don't have any friends that like this stuff. So if you well, want to be my friend, hit me up. <laughs> I have a friend that likes this stuff. You do? Who? It's you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but um. Yeah, I think it's really important to bring light to the history of gay marriage in general Mm -hmm. and how it was initially uh, brought about. I think it's very interesting that initially, like the way that they sort of, you could say, marketed Mm -hmm. gay marriage or lesbian marriage was by being like, we're just like you, white and straight passing, accept us. Like that is clearly so besides like who we actually are or who the community actually is. And it's so uh, exclusatory of everyone else, mm-hmm. um, especially people that were change makers like like the the trans black and Hispanic women that led the riots, for example, mm-hmm. uh, that gave us what is pride today. Yeah. So to be like, I don't know. It feels very much like shitting on them and all of the work that they did. It's (laughs) It's pretty gross, gross, man. Um, But in regards to the marriage piece itself, Mm. what are your personal thoughts on marriage, given what you know about like misogyny and the history Mm. of misogyny within traditional marriage and the history of gay marriage? 
and th- all of the different conflicts that came with it? That's a tough question. I honestly don't think I'd ever want to get married. Fair um, and square. Uh, it's so tough. Because it is tough, though. It's yeah. so tough because here's my thing. And mm. I'm, I'm going to let you uh, speak to that in a second. But Thanks. Um, since we are quite literally partners, yeah. um, I feel like I also need to be answering this question. But mm-hmm. the concept of marriage in itself, like the construct of it, of all these like legalities and involving the government in your relationship and being like, I signed this waiver that I belong to you and you belong to me, mm-hmm. all these different things. I just, I hate that. I hate it so much. Yeah. And especially given the history of the misogyny of traditional marriage. Like, mm-hmm. I hate those concepts. I hate those constructs. I hate... Um, there's there's really, really beautiful things that can come with traditions. Mm-hmm. But just because something is a tradition doesn't mean it's a good one. Mm-hmm. Um, team. So, you know, traditions within marriage, I, I don't abide by them, to be honest. Yeah. And... On the other hand, though, on this other hand right here, Mm -hmm. there's the whole issue of legally, if I were to get seriously ill or if you were to get seriously ill, Mm. that would mean that we're then not allowed to see each other in the hospital. Like, what is that about? how lucid you are. I don't know, honestly, all of the facts associated with that especially now because the laws definitely have changed mm-hmm. so i'm not does totally sure common law works. count you know again i i don't know all the facts yeah know? we need to know some more facts up in here yeah so that's what we're walking away with you heard but Period. when it comes to that and now that i've kind of stated my piece mm. what are your full thoughts on it so i love love <laughs> i do i love it um i love other people's love i just yeah i think love is a very beautiful thing and i like to celebrate love Mm -hmm. but i just don't like the traditions around it i would really like to build our own traditions that'd be sick and have like a celebration of love um potentially if there's like tax benefits i would get legally married (laughs) um but i wouldn't want to do like the whole stupid ceremony like i want to come up with my absolute own oh yeah okay and 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 this is not a diss to people who like traditional marriage Mm. we just have different preferences like we at all don't abide by traditions of marriage Mm. i love the idea of creating our own love and when it comes to creating our own traditions you were talking about you got ideas Mm -hmm. what you got in store right now well i just know what i want my wedding to look like i haven't necessarily like come up with a ceremony idea Mm -hmm. you know because there needs to be some sort of ceremony moment we've discussed bonding your souls yeah so yeah for sure no for sure yeah for sure um <laughs> but i know but, what i what i want like the event to be what do you want the event to be i want it to be a big old party so i remember watching sense eight and this is what inspired me Ooh, about this love sense eight so it was the finale when naomi and what's Naomi's partner named uh, I don't know, but they're like <laughs> a really sweet like trans lesbian couple and I'm for it. So for so it. So in the end they get married and they're on top of the Eiffel Tower and it's almost like circusy drag queen cool vibes like yeah. that. And in my mind I was like, let's do that, but take it like twenty times farther. Let's take it up a notch. Let's take it up a couple of notches. So I'm envisioning like a full on like red and white cool vintage circus tent. Oof. And everyone comes in almost like fully like gender bending queer drag like everybody in their in their most like flauntiest outfit mm. like come in full drag like come my, in like your biggest and boldest yes and my dad has like a glitter beard <gasps> I've, i see it for him he'll hate it but he's gonna would do he it. do it yes absolutely. would he have a glitter beard yes he's an ally that's everything <laughs> Yes, he's an ally. Dad, don't be homophobic. Put on a glitter beard. <laughs> Dad, if you don't put on this glitter beard, you're homophobic and your daughter hates you. I think he would feel so <laughs> nervous about that. Even just when I was like nervous to come out to him, he was like, why didn't you want to come out to me? Aww. <laughs> like, he was sad that I like even for a second thought he would be homophobic. Aww, so so I feel sweet like, though. So moral of the story, I think he put on a glitter beard. 
<laughs> I think he would feel so bad yeah. about potentially being homophobic yes. that he would put on a glitter beard. Absolutely. <laughs> so love that for him. Yes. And, but literally, like, my whole family would have to. I would, like, hire a makeup artist to do this. Wow. And get them all, like, crazy-ass outfits. I love that. Yes. But I'm thinking, like, people on stilts. Like, people, um, like, doing acrobatics from, like, the <gasps> ceiling. Oh, my God. But, like, Trapeze artists? Lots of drag. <laughs> and I also want, like, a really cute um, lit up ferris wheel and i kind of want this to be like on the edge of like a hill that'd be incredible <gasps> by the water sure on a hill but like the hill goes down into the water yeah sure. <gasps> that'd be amazing yeah i just want to be like a really lots cool of dance view. yeah oh and so much dance too like lot like <sighs> our wedding would be a vibe because all like, your dancer be, friends would might be as well make it a festival that's sick. that's what that's how sick mm -hmm. we would want it to be it's just like yeah. a sick festival where everybody parties all night yes. including us because mm -hmm. you know like traditionally like usually the bride is like the most stressed out and like doesn't have any fun at I don't her want wedding it. like i don't want it mm -hmm. i don't if i ain't having fun i don't want it yeah but everybody like create this space and vibe where everybody can just let out their inner child yes. and just like Go crazy. Exactly. Yeah. Well, with all of that, I'm really curious now to know what <laughs> your guys' opinion of marriage is. Yeah. Are you for it? Are you against it? Are you somewhere in the middle, kind of like us, where we're like, bleh, bleh, bleh. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and also, like, what would you want your wedding to look like? Yeah. Mm, let us know in the comments down below if you're watching on YouTube. Hello. So make sure that if you support this podcast and you support us, that you leave a like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. It costs zero dollars. Literally free 99. <laughs> so do it up and we really do appreciate it so much. Yeah. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you in the next pod. Peace. Peace. Mwah.